There is a, a constraint that we have to deal with, and I, I hope this kind of maybe clears up some misconceptions that may be out there in terms of our debt issues. Uh, we have debt in this country that's about 3.6 times our GDP. Now, GDP is 15 trillion. 3.6 times 15 trillion is a lot of money. But where is it? If you look at the household sector, where all of us are apart, uh, you see it's about 92%. But where is that debt? Well, it's all in those mortgages. It's all in those ninja mortgages, the subprimes that, that aren't functioning, that have to be deleveraged. And they're being deleveraged. We've had four months of increasing sales of new and existing homes. That's pretty good. Most of those homes are foreclosures. We're getting them off the books. It's painful, uh, but they're getting off the books. And that's been somewhat incented by the uh, $8,000 first time home buyer uh, credits, it's true. But at least we're beginning to make some movement along the lines of bringing that down. So if you look at the end of the first quarter, that 73.5% uh, of GDP, which is way out of line where it's been historically, was around 80%. So we brought it down to 73 and a half. If you look at the next line, it's the so-called other debt. Other debt would include automobiles, furniture, and appliances. That was only 18% of GDP. That's nowhere near uh, abysmal. I mean, that's right in line with where it's been historically. Even though it looked like everybody was buying two cars, uh, they weren't. Uh, appliances, furniture, and the like. That's right in line with historical numbers. But the problem is, it's at a time when unemployment is huge. All right? Employments, we're still losing jobs. We probably will when you see the report tomorrow. I've lost jobs in October. But it'll be much less than it was earlier in the year when it was 700,000 jobs that were being shared. We're probably down into the 200,000. That's bad enough, but at least it's moving in the right direction. Point I want to make is when you have an unemployment going up and employment going down, any debt's bad. All right? Not only that, but your home prices, depending on where you live, may have gone down substantially. They went down 30% for the economy as a whole. And your 401k probably was more like a 101k. We think it's back up to 201. Still, you know, with asset prices uh, in the tank, uh, people tend to be more cautious, they're more conservative, and as a consequence, uh, they tend to um, take on less debt. So deleveraging is taking place in that regard. If we move up to the business sector, again, non-financial business, uh, which is, I guess, what's mostly represented here, uh, was not way out of whack. For an expanding economy, 78% uh, of GDP is not too bad for debt. It matters how you manage it, but in a bad economy, that's too much. So that has to be deleveraged as well. Cash is king, as we know. More cash management strategies are coming onto the table. Uh, debt is not your friend in a downturn like this, especially if you have to churn it over and you find the terms are not particularly friendly. But if you move to the financial sector, that's where the problem lies, and that's the counterpart of the household. That's the ninja mortgages, the deleveraging that the banking done. The banking sector, the financial services sector has to uh, finish off. And then finally, if you look at government, they look virtuous. Uh, that, by the way, is both federal and uh, state and local. Of course, we know that's all federal. Um, <laughs> that's going up to 112%. Right? That, that, as, as the debt everywhere else goes down, the stimulus and the bailout money coming online is going to make government debt up to about 1.2 times the GDP from the 65% we currently see. So we're going to have some issues going ahead on what the government does about its debt, but we're not going to get too much into that because that's tomorrow's problem. Today's problem is getting this economy moving again, and unfortunately the only people who have any money to spend are the people in Washington, right? And so that's the basis upon which we see a recovery taking place. I just might emphasize that uh, saving rate has gone up as a consequence of what I've just referred to. The fact that people are saving more, they're building down their debt, uh, they're not spending as much as they had, but keep something in mind. There's only two things you can do with your disposable income. You can save it or you can spend it. If we're now saving maybe 90, I'm sorry, uh, more well, like 6%, we're still spending 94. It used to be when the saving rate was 1%, we were spending 99. Well, I'll tell you, 94 percent of spending is a lot of spending. That gets us 2% GDP growth. It does not get us 3. Uh, so uh, it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, people will consume if they have the income to do so. 
And long as disposable income holds its own, which it seems to be doing, uh, mainly because of, again, the tax relief and some of the direct spending that government is putting into the economy, we would expect to see uh, spending hold up uh, reasonably well. Okay. So what are we doing about this? Well, the financial market seize up was the first problem. And the reason I went through that is simply to emphasize we can't get the economy fixed until we get the financial market stabilized. And we did that. We did that in part through uh, very, very quick action by the central bank around the world. The Fed and, and Bank of England and, and European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan reacted very, very quickly to bring interest rates practically down to zero. That's called the ZERP, the zero interest rate policy. Um, but that wasn't enough. I mean, who cares what the interest rate is? If you can't get the money or you don't want to take any risk, then zero doesn't quite cut it. So they did quantitative easing. Uh, and that's still going on. And that's when the central bank buys assets off the bank's books and puts in cash. But they're not going to buy the ninjas. They couldn't do that. The toxic assets did not get taken off the books. They're buying a term uh, securities, Fed sec treasury, treasuries. They bought some also riskier assets than they like to buy, and they put them on the treasury balance sheet and put cash into the banks. But the banks didn't spend it. They didn't lend it because they weren't certain what their own uh, asset values uh, were worth at that time. So that didn't get us anywhere. Uh, the bailouts, we've already uh, referred to those, uh, put a lot of money in, and that's what prevented the collapse. I am convinced that the markets only seized up, and unlike the Depression, we didn't get a financial system collapse because we bailed out those institutions. Uh, there was still a lot of pain. There was a lot of unemployment that emerged from that that will take a while to recover from. But the point I want to emphasize is that um, the bailouts prevented the collapse. Now, it's funny how that worked because Paulson initially wanted to buy the bad assets, right? And then he heard something happened in England where they were recapitalizing banks and not taking off the bad assets. Why whatever they did in England, we had to copy. I have no idea. But it was viewed as a brilliant idea. And so that's what happened. We didn't take the toxic assets off, and we still have the problem. The toxic assets are there, but they're not declining, because the stock market's been mostly going up. So they're not quite the issue that they were at the time. And it is more and more possible to get money. If you look at something called the TED spread, which is the three-month treasury less the three-month London interbank rate. Now, that's a funny term, but uh, the three-month treasury now will get you five basis points. Everybody's been buying treasuries. China's been buying treasuries. So the rate is down to about five basis points. The three-month LIBOR went up to 500 basis points when the crisis hit. That meant that banks weren't lending to each other. That's what that LIBOR is. Global borrowing among banks on an overnight basis to meet their own requirements. At 500 basis points, nobody was playing in that sandbox. It turned out that nobody trusted each other. There was no confidence. That was the panic that set in. That's now back down to 28. So the gap between the three-month treasury and the three-month LIBOR is where it should be. That's my proof that the, and I'm convinced of this, that the financial market stabilized without collapsing. Now, it's stabilized, but risk aversion has now entered the scene, right? Both on the part of lenders and on the part of borrowers, it's very, very difficult to get that money. So the net here is that we still have to work through that, but that's the economic problem. It's not the financial problem. Financial problem, we think, is pretty much uh, okay. Then. How do we get out of this? And what is the economic problem we're trying to solve? We're trying to get the economy growing again. And we're trying to sustain that growth. And we're trying to get private money back into the spending stream the way it should be. And so that's required coming from the stimulus. Uh, Obama wanted a trillion. He got 787 billion. He wanted to create 3.5 million jobs. We've lost 7.2, so we have some ways to go. That stimulus, however, had two components. Tax relief was 286 billion. We already have that. It's all in our disposable incomes. If you were on a salary and it was under certain amounts, you got an April uh, tax benefit. Uh, if you were retired, you got a Social Security check. If you have un unemployment, it's been extended. All of that money is in disposable income. It's there to be spent, but it's not being spent, at least not very much. First of all, it's a one-off, but nevertheless, we'd still spend one-offs. Uh, the other 501 of that 786 is direct spending. IBM played some role in getting that stimulus the way it turned out. Uh, we uh, emphasized uh, broadband expansion, e-health, and uh, smart grids, and concluded there'd be about 800,000 jobs created with those plans. But they don't come in until next year, 2010. They're public-private partnerships. You have to see some progress being made. 